And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. The sun on the 21st of December is at his lowest point of declination below the equator, and the days are the darkest and the nights the longest, while all nature lies dead, locked in the arms of winter. On the 21st of March the sun reaches the vernal equinox. Spring begins, and nature revives from the death of winter. On the 21st of June the sun reaches the summer solstice, when the days are the longest, and he seems for the first time to have regained all his former power and glory. The sun, starting in Capricorn, passes successively through Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, and Gemini, until he reaches the summer solstice, or summit of the zodiacal arch. This ascending path of the sun along the ecliptic and its symbolical significance is expressively illustrated. The winter and summer solstices were anciently in Aquarius and Leo, and not in Capricorn and Cancer, as they now are, owing to the precession of the equinoxes. All modern astronomers and astrologers declare the same thing. A study of the various astronomical and astrological myths of antiquity shows that the most of them originated when the summer solstice was either in Leo or between Leo and Cancer. In the days when the planetary worship had its rise, the Sun, in his passage from the winter to the summer solstice, started in Aquarius and ascended successively through the signs Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and Cancer, 30 degrees each, and entered Leo at the summit of the zodiacal arch on the 21st day of June. These seven signs are, therefore, symbolical of seven ascending stages or steps, and according to the science of astrology, these seven signs are the houses of the seven planets in this order, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, Mercury, the Moon, and the Sun. It is equally certain that the explanation which refers it to the ladder Jacob saw in his vision, although beautiful, is the invention of Preston, Cross, or some other recent writer, who had no idea of its true meaning or ancient origin. The signification of the ladder of three rounds represents the seven stars, or Pleiades. His emblem is a modification of the ladder of the mysteries, consisting of seven rounds and is of the same general astronomical and astrological meaning. The Sun, when ascending from the winter solstice to the vernal equinox, the constellation Taurus and the Pleiades or seven stars situated therein, passes successively through three signs of the zodiac, Aquarius, Pisces, and Aries. These three signs are, therefore, emblematically represented by a ladder of three principal rounds, by means of which the Sun climbs up from the point of his lowest, southern declination to the vernal equinox and the seven stars in Taurus. The emblematic meaning now attached to the Masonic ladder, which refers it to the one Jacob saw in his vision, is neither lost nor sacrificed. We admit that the origin of the emblem is of the ancient mysteries, and its symbolism is thus made more impressive, so that we gain rather than lose by referring to it. The initiation into all the ancient mysteries was a drama founded upon the astronomical and astrological allegory of the death and resurrection of the sun, and was intended to, and did, impress upon the mind of the initiate in the strongest manner possible the two great doctrines of the unity of God and the immortality of man. These are today the two great fundamental principles of Freemasonry, and are illustrated and taught in a similar manner in the ritual of the third degree. The solar allegory and emblems of the ancient mysteries have a twofold meaning. 1. Being founded on the passage of the sun among the twelve constellations of the zodiac, his overthrow by the three autumnal months, his return to life at the vernal equinox, and his exaltation at the summer solstice, taught and illustrated all the leading principles of astronomy and astrology, and had an important scientific value to the initiated. 2. By personifying the sun, and requiring the initiate to represent him, the whole solar phenomena were exhibited in an allegorical manner and became symbolical of the unity of God, and the immortality of the soul. 
The Ladder of the Mysteries, being an emblem intended to illustrate the main solar allegory, had the same twofold symbolism. When fully explained to the initiated, it fixed upon the mind certain great facts in astronomical and astrological science. It taught the order and position of the signs of the zodiac, also the ascent of the sun from the point of his lowest declination below the equator to that of his highest above it by seven equal, graduated steps. It also taught the duration and order of the seasons, the length of the solar year, and many other particulars of the greatest importance to agriculture, as well as to science and art generally. The emblem, viewed in an allegorical sense, also taught, by solar analogy, the unity of God and the life everlasting. The ladder in this sense was the emblem of the ascent into heaven from the lower hemisphere, the underworld of darkness, winter, and death. This mystic ladder leads to the seven stars, or Pleiades, shining in the constellation Taurus at the golden gates of spring. It mounted onward and upward to the summit of the royal arch of heaven, emblematically teaching us that by the ladder of virtue the soul of man will at last pierce the cloudy canopy, and mount to the highest circle of the starry decked heavens, to dwell forever triumphant over death and the grave. The Masonic institution loses none of its significance by its origin in the astronomical and astrological symbolism of the ancient mysteries. On the contrary, it received a much more extended and beautiful signification, being clothed with a scientific as well as a moral meaning, teaching the law of God and leading to the mastery of self. The three principal rounds of this ladder is said to be emblematically representing faith, hope, and charity, when the sun has reached his lowest southern declination, and begins to ascend toward the vernal equinox, we have nothing but faith in the goodness of God and the immutability of the laws of nature to sustain our belief that the sun will once more unlock the golden gates of spring. When the sun enters Pisces, and ascends the second round of the ladder, hope is added to our faith, for the sun is seen already to have climbed up two-thirds of the distance required to reach the vernal equinox. When, at last, on the 21st of March, he mounts the third round of the ladder, and enters Aries, the sweet influences of the Pleiades mentioned in the book of Job are once more felt, while beneath the warm rays of the vernal sun, the snows dissolve, and the earth begins again to put on her beautiful attire. For lo, the winter is past, and the flowers appear on the earth, and the time of the singing of birds is come, and the voice of the turtle is heard in the land. The third and last round of the zodiacal ladder is, therefore, emblematic of charity, or the divine love and benevolence which each year cause the springtime to come in due season. So ought we all to have faith in God, hope in a blessed immortality, emblematically represented by the vernal equinox, and charity for all mankind. The three steps delineated on the master's carpet have reference to the three steps, or degrees, by which the initiated becomes a master mason. They have an astronomical and astrological explanation, and allude to the three signs, Taurus, Gemini, and Cancer, emblematic of three steps, by means of which the sun, having already reached the vernal equinox by means of the zodiacal ladder, ascends to the summit of the royal arch at the summer solstice, which point is emblematic of the master's degree.